Hey, my name is Billy Andre. I'm the lead pastor at The Bridge. Thanks for joining us today. If at any point in time you need prayer, you can text the word prayer to 21000 and we would love to pray for you. We also want to know that you're with us. So drop us a comment in the comment section and just say hi. Hey, thanks for joining us again. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the service.
Thanks for joining us for our online service. We've been in a series called Staying Positive in a Negative World. 
So if you joined us a few weeks ago, we talked about staying optimistic in a negative world. How do you remain optimistic? Well, we looked at Romans chapter 8, and we said that the things that we experience, the trials that we experience, will not compare to the glorious future that we have with God. Then, the second week, we looked at the prophet Elijah, and we said, okay, how can we recharge our batteries? Because when you're living in negative circumstances, it has a way of just draining you. And so we need to be able to recharge physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Last week, we talked about being grateful, being thankful, and we zeroed in specifically on the cross and what that meant for you and what that means for me. So we said the cross, because we're grateful for the cross, because we have acceptance, we're forgiven, we have assurance of eternal life because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Well, today, I'm going to talk about something that I think many of us can relate to. It's this idea of staying generous, being generous in a world that is negative, in a world of famine, in a world of scarcity. How do I remain generous in a world of scarcity? I mean, think about it. We've been in a pandemic for the past nine months. At the beginning of the pandemic, as many of you know, you went to the store to buy some toilet paper and you couldn't even find one roll on the shelf. People were running out of hand sanitizers and other cleaning supplies. And it was like, oh my goodness, and everybody began to panic. Well, here we are again. Uh, we're in kind of a second spike of this pandemic and people are going back to the stores to get toilet paper. I don't even get it. Maybe you heard about the guy, he went and he hoarded and bought tons of rolls of toilet paper. I mean, just bought out this one store and then realized he didn't need all of this toilet paper. He went to try to take it back and they wouldn't take it back. So this guy's got a garage full of toilet paper and he's going, I've got a unlimited supply for the rest of my life. Whoopee. <laughs> well, today I want to talk to you about a story about a woman in the Bible who had scarcity in her life. She had living in a time of famine, living in a time where she didn't know where her next meal was going to come from. And yet in the midst of this, she trusted God and was able to be generous. And that's what I want to do is I want to share with you the story from 1 Kings chapter 17, actually involving the prophet Elijah again. And so let me set up the story like this. There's a woman, she's a widow. So her husband's dead and she's got a son and she's gathering sticks to be able to build a fire so that she can take her last handful of flour and her last bit of oil and she's gonna bake some bread. And then she says this, she says, then I'm gonna die. It's my last meal with my son. So at this, at this time, Elijah walks up, he's the prophet and God tells Elijah to go to this woman and he says, ask her for some water and bread. So think about this, Elijah walks up to this woman who's about to eat her last meal and says, hey, can I have some water and while you're at it, can you bake me some bread? And this is, the woman explains to Elijah, listen, this is what I was gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and bake my, my last meal and give it to my son, we're gonna die. And Elijah looks at it and says, no, that's not how it's gonna end. You see, in God's economy, when things seem like hopeless, when things seem like you don't have enough, when you lost your job or you can't, you don't have enough money to pay your rent, and you're like, God, where's that money gonna come from? As we trust God, God is the great provider. And we're gonna find that in the story that there's three ways for us to stay generous in a world that is scarce. The first way is this, is that to stay generous in a world of scarcity, I need to realize that fear keeps us in a scarcity mindset. Fear keeps us in a, we all know this. I mean, think about the mindset. This woman is a widow. So in her culture, she has no rights and she wouldn't have been able to work and actually earn money. The men did that in that culture. And so she would have been reduced to begging, but they're living in a famine. They're living in a drought. And so nobody has resources. So at this point, she's helpless and hopeless. And not only that, she's struggling with mom guilt. She's got a son that is, she's gonna watch die as well. 
and she can't provide anything for him. And so she's in this hopeless, helpless situation. And look what Elijah says to her in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13. He says, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Why would she be afraid? Well, of course she would be afraid. She's in a survival mode and she's looking at starving to death. Of course she's gonna be afraid. He says, go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. And she's probably confused at this point. I don't get it. You, don't, you see, Elijah, you don't understand. I had enough for one little piece of bread. You're saying, make you some bread first, give you the prophet of God resources first, and then make some bread? It doesn't make any sense. And as I think about where we're at right now with people and the COVID and uh, people hoarding things, and that's what, that's what happens when we get afraid. Uh, we begin to hoard resources. People begin to hoard toilet paper and paper towels and hand sanitizer, and they start to hoard things. Why? Because they're afraid and they're scared. And maybe for you, you've lost your job. And you're like, how am I gonna provide for my family? and you're afraid, can I tell you this? That in the midst of that fear, don't create this defensive posture in your life, but I'm gonna say this, go on the offense. And the second thing I want you to realize that if you wanna live generous in a world of scarcity, you have to secondly trust God when it doesn't make sense. Now you can take that any way you want. When it doesn't make sense, meaning, hey, that just doesn't make sense, or it doesn't make sense, meaning, that little dollar sign cent thing. You see, we can trust God no matter where we're at. In fact, that's what Elijah told, says. He says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. So he makes a promise to this woman that if she obeys and trusts him, that God is gonna follow through and God is gonna take care of her needs. That just blows my mind. This is a miracle that is taking place. And can I tell you, it's a miracle that we see throughout scripture. That the people that were highlighted in scripture for their generosity, it was never when they had abundance. It was never when they had overload of resources. It was always when they had an underload of resources. In fact, I think about some of the people in the Bible that, that were examples of, of this. Um, what about the, wo the woman, the widow, in Mark chapter 12, where Jesus is with his disciples and they're at the temple and the Pharisees and religious leaders and they're giving all these resources and they're giving change and they're making noise and they're drawing attention to themselves. And then this one little widow, she comes up and like drops a penny into the offering and Jesus said, she just gave more than those religious leaders. And the disciples are looking at her like, what? And then he said this, because she gave all that she had to live on. You saw this poor widow gave everything. You see, God doesn't want just our resources. God wants our hearts. And God had that widow's heart. And God had the widow in this story's heart as well. I think about the boy in John chapter six, who gave his lunch. Remember that? The, the five fish and the two loaves and, and he gives those over and Jesus multiplies the lunch and provides a miracle where he feeds 5,000 people off that one little boy's lunch. It was, that, it was this, out of the scarcity, out of what he had, he gave. I think about the woman in Luke chapter seven. The Bible calls her a sinful woman and she goes and she breaks an alabaster jar of this expensive perfume that would have been probably months or year worth of wages and she puts it on Jesus' feet, she anoints Jesus' feet and she's crying and she's wiping his feet with her hair. It's this beautiful moment of extravagance and she, you have to understand in the story, this sinful woman, when she broke the alabaster jar, when she decided to follow Jesus, she was actually giving up her, her job. Because when the Bible says she was a sinful woman, that was implying that she was a prostitute. 
And so when she gives up her job, think about that. She is no longer employed. She's no longer getting money. This alabaster jar is like her savings account and she breaks that alabaster jar and she pours it on the feet of Jesus. In every situation in the Bible, what we see is people that are giving out of their scarcity, but they're generous in the midst of that and God provides more than they could ever imagine. In fact, this is the point in the story in, in the Bible where in Malachi chapter three, it's the only time that I can see in the Bible where God says, test me in this. He says, test me in giving the tithe. Now, what does a tithe mean? A tithe is a 10th. And in the Old Testament, it was when you gave the first fruits of what God had blessed you with. And so they live in an, in an agricultural society. So they would give the, the first fruits of their crops to God as an offering. How do we give our first fruits? When we get our paycheck, we give the first 10% of our gross income and we say, God, this is yours because I, we know that everything that we have is from God. And so we want to worship you with our lives and we want to give over this money to you. It's something that for, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> you know, when I, I thought about when I became a Christian when I was 18 and somebody came to me and said, so you, as a Christian, you just begin to tithe. And I, I go, oh, wow. And so I started to tithe and I was still in college and I was like, okay, I don't make that much, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and tithe what I have. And then uh, there was always a point in my life where I had to kind of exercise some faith in giving because there was always a reason not to give. And I think a lot of us can rationalize that in our generosity. We say, well, we can't give. And I, I remember when my wife and I, we got married, I was still in college. I was paying my way through college. And this would have been a perfect time just to stop giving the tithe to God. Guess what? <laughs> we didn't. We looked at each other and we said, we're going to continue to give. And then we bought our first house and this would have been, an, we were stretched financially. Guess what? We continued to tithe. Then we had our first daughter and then we had our second son, or our first, our second child, our first son. And then there was times in our lives where, you know, we had car problems and unexpected bills that would come in and we were stretched financially, but we continued to give and we saw God over and over, and over provide for us. And then three years later, or three years ago, the Tubbs fire came and ripped through our neighborhood and took our house and all of our belongings. And it was at that point, we were like, okay, this probably could be the time where we do not tithe and we don't give. And guess what? We, just, we looked at each other. God's always been faithful. God's always taken care of us. And in the midst of our famine, we decided to continue to give. And guess what? God was beyond faithful to us. I, I, I can't sit here and, and lie to you. God will provide for you when you trust him with your money, when you give to him. And, and I'm not even saying give to the bridge. I, if, listen, you're online right now and you're listening and you might be in another state. You might even be in another country. Find a church or find something where God is working where you can give that 10% to him and watch what God does to you. You know, uh, several years back, we did a, a stewardship message and talked about giving and generosity. And I said this, let's put God to the test. I said, uh, let's do a 90 day challenge. And for some of you that are not tithing or you're not giving on a regular basis, I want you for the next 90 days to begin to tithe. And if after those 90 days, you want your money back, we'll go ahead and refund your money as a church. Guess what happened? No one asked for their money back. Why is that? Because they saw God's faithfulness in the midst of it. And so give even when it doesn't make sense. And then thirdly is in order for me to stay generous in a world of scarcity, I need to give from my scarcity and watch God take care of me. Give from my scarcity and watch God take care of me. 1 Kings 17 verses 15 and 16. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. She went ahead and she made that bread for Elijah before she made it for her and her son. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. <clears throat> this is amazing, you guys. So this jug of oil never ran dry and this basket of flour never ran out. And she had food for her family until this famine 
till the drought was over. This was a miracle of God. You see, when we're not generous, we don't allow God to work in our lives. And then we don't get to see the miracle and rejoice and, and give him great thanks and praise for what he's done. You see, when we find ourselves hoarding and being scarce and having this mentality of I'm never going to have anything, so I've got to get mine. You know that there's been studies done that say that people are actually happier when they give a gift rather than getting a gift. You can probably say that for your own life, that when you're able to give a gift and see the, the joy on another person's life, you're able to release that gift to that person. It's more exciting than getting a gift. And so <clears throat> give God, give for my scarcity and watch God take care of me. This past week, um, and the, the gentleman I'm going to share about would not mind me sharing this to you guys. But I had lunch with a gentleman in our church. He's in our 80s, is in his 80s. And uh, we had a nice lunch, a time of fellowship to kind of catch up. And we haven't connected much during the COVID. And he began to share with me about the years of God's faithfulness as he's been faithful in tithing and giving generously and being able to support what God is doing. And so he began to just share story after story after story. And after our lunch, he slid over a check to me and it was a large check, a large check. And I asked him, I said, are you sure the zero is in the right spot? And he said, yeah, I'm sure. And I was like, I'm so grateful for your generosity and supporting the work that God is doing at the bridge. But here's where the illustration is important. I forgot to mention to you that his wife passed away last week and he is grieving the loss of his wife. You talk about negative circumstances, then the midst of his loss, in the midst of his grief, he's continuing to be generous. Why? Because he knows that God's gonna take care of him. And he was talking to me and he said, I, Billy, I don't understand. I, I wish there was a way that I could communicate to the church God's faithfulness and how he's called us to give. And maybe through his story, maybe through my story, that your story can be different today. That as you begin to give God the pen of your story and your finances and you say, God, I'm gonna to begin to be generous, even when it doesn't make sense, even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of loss, even in the midst of the fact that I don't have a secure job, even in the midst of my scarcity, God, I'm gonna be generous to you. That's what God wants. Trust him, test him, I dare you, and watch God show up in a powerful way. You know, you can never outgive God. You can't. God, see, the reason why God has called us to be generous is because he's generous towards us. In fact, he gave us his most prized possession when he gave us his one and only son. The Bible says that in John 3, 16, for God so loved us that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God gave his son for you. The least that we can do is give our lives, our hearts, our time, our resources, and our finances back to him and worship. And maybe this message has encouraged your heart. Maybe for you, you you're a little bit afraid, kind of like, when Elijah had to tell the, the woman, hey, don't be afraid, I get it. These are tough times. I'll be honest with you. There's been moments when I've been afraid, but I'll tell you, I'll never regret stepping out in faith and giving God what is his. Let's pray together. God, thank you for this story about this woman, this widow who really gave even when it didn't make sense, Lord, she gave out of her scarcity and watched God, you take care of her and her son. There's so many in that same position right now, Lord, and they're struggling and they're hurting and they're not sure what to do. God, and I pray that you would give each person here that faith to, be, to believe and to put you to the test, to begin to give faithfully to you and watch you show up and work and provide. Lord, I thank you that you gave your one and only son for us 
that we can't outgive you. And I want to pray for anybody that has never put their faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for you, for, for us on the cross, that right now they would say, Lord Jesus, I put my faith in you. I receive the gift and the generosity of God through Jesus Christ. And I believe that he died to set me free. Lord, we receive that grace. We receive that gift right now. I thank you for that person right now that put their faith in you. God, you just are excited. There's a smile on your face. Now let us, Lord, worship you with every part of our lives, including our finances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail. The promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never failed me. Hey, thanks for joining us for our online service. We are so glad that you were able to hear the message on generosity today. If you've made a decision to put your faith in Jesus, we would also love to hear about that. You can direct message us on Facebook or you can send us an email to our website. As we talked about earlier, times are tough and this is an opportunity for you to be able to apply the message. We're so grateful for your generosity during these difficult times. You know, you can donate to The Bridge by texting the word The Bridge to 77977, or you can go to our website and donate there, or you can write a check and send it to 301 Fulton Road, Santa Rosa, California, 95401. Hey, we're also grateful that God has been continuing to bless us with nice weather, and so we have our outdoor service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 301 Fulton Road. And so we would love to have you there. You can sign up by going to your newsletter or you can go to our website and sign up there as well. So once again, thanks for joining us. And for the next 10 minutes, there's gonna be some reflection questions for you to go a little bit deeper. And so I hope you can sit back, relax, and just really spend some time in God's word, reflecting on the message and reflecting on staying generous in a world of scarcity. God bless and we'll see you next week.